We are mailing it in, as in we will barely try on this show. And I know what you're saying. When do you guys ever try? And the truth is, well, you're right, we don't. But we're going to try even less on this edition of Sports Center with Jay and Dan. I'm Jay. That's Dan. Dan, the Toronto Maple Leafs. What a start to the season. Everyone, everywhere I go in Toronto, everyone's like, go Leafs! Go Leafs! Five-game win streak, but the Pens were in town. Yeah, you've got the highlight back. I do. Yeah. <sighs> sorry, sorry, Dan. <laughs> well, not a great start for me, but look at this. It's Ben Azaguer, the guy who was on our show yesterday from the Kenyan Ice Lines. He was at the game. He was Sidney Crosby's guest, got a tour of Scotiabank Arena. Very cool. What a nice guy. Got a lot of nice comments about Ben on the social media, so thank you for that. And there's Evgeny Malkin opening the scoring, beating Freddie Anderson, who missed Monday's game with a knee injury. Later, Mitch Marner to John Tavares. Matt Murray back from his concussion makes an outstanding stop. So it's 1 0 ends. Dying seconds of the period. Zach Hyman takes a high stick from Jake Gensel. No penalty on the play. Hyman needed eight stitches above the eye. So obviously, Mike Babcock's not happy. Gensel, this is a funny reaction. Oh, I guess I did get it. Uh, Hyman returns to the second wearing a large visor. Jake Gardner. One timer stop. Hyman in front, robbed by Murray. Poppy. Seven straight multi-point games to start the season. Take a look at that list of names. Incredible. But no shots through two periods for Austin Matthews. That's his first shot of the game. He was held pointless for the first time this season. A little pat on the back there. Nazem Kadri. That's Nazem Kadri. Robbed of his first goal of the season. Murray had 38 saves. Uh, Nazem Kadri inadvertently put it into his own net here. Malkin gets credit for his second of the game. Uh, and then after Chris Letang also scores into an empty net, Kadri breaks his stick. An all Canadian matchup in the PEG, Canucks and Jets. It's the team's first meeting since Patty Line commented on the Canucks banning Fortnite saying they need something to blame after last year. Ya burnt! I highly doubt any of the players on the ice in this game care or even remember. Uh, even though Line was asked if he thought the Canucks players would get on him about his earlier comments pre-game. If I'm being honest, I don't really care. Yeah, I think somebody's going to probably mention that, but I'm, I'm just going to say nothing and uh, just focus on playing hockey. Okay, first period, Line. He is on the power play and focused on playing hockey. Line A with his third. With the assist, Blake Wheeler joins Ilya Kovalchuk as the only two players to register 500 points with the Thrashers slash Jets franchise. It's 1-0 home team in the second. Bo Horvat takes the long stretch pass. And, oh, nice move. Scores! That's a nice goal. The Canucks have lost nine of their last ten meetings with the Jets. This one tied through two. Dustin Bufflin back after missing a couple games with an injury, having fun with the Canucks bench. Jets up a man. Bufflin feeds Nick Ehlers, who gets it to Brian Little. Little gets his second. Beats Unders Nielsen with a backhand. Jets up 3-1. They keep it at the line. And then rewarded with a nice feed from Little. That's Bufflin. Bufflin's first of the year seals it after scoring just 10 goals in the previous five. Winnipeg erupts for four in this one. Edmonton playing its home opener after starting the season with four straight games on the road. They were hosting Boston. Early second period of this one. No score in the hockey game. Matt Grizzlick to Dave Krejci and Boston is on the board. Krejci's first of the season. One up in Bruins. Bruins. A couple of minutes later, Adam Larson. Beautiful pass to Kyler Yamamoto. Spokane Chiefs. First National Hockey League goal past Jaroslav Halak. We're tied at one after two. Third period, Oilers power play. Connor McDavid. Lucic. Trying to find Milan Lucic side of the net, but it goes right by him, comes out the other side to the Nuge. Ryan Nugent Hopkins scores. McDavid. A point on 10 of the Oilers, 12 goals this season. Made it 2-1 Edmonton, but four minutes after that, that top line for Boston, so dangerous. Brad Marchand to David Posternock. Posternock, 11 points on the season. They tied it up at two. This one needed overtime. 
And 30 seconds in. Marchand, a bad pass up the middle that's picked off by McDavid. And he will feed Leon Dreisaitl, the Deutschland dangler. For the overtime winner, beautiful setup to end it. McDavid's third straight multi-point game. Oilers are three and two. With world champion Astros on the brink of elimination, Houston turned to Justin Verlander Thursday. His opponent, the former Detroit Tiger teammate David Price, who beat out Verlander for the 2012 Cy Young, even though Verlander had more first place votes. Red Sox Strohs Game 5 of the ALCS Wednesday's Game 4 ending on that incredible Andrew Benintendi catch. Alex Bregman was not a huge fan of Benintendi's game-saving theatrics. There's Verlander, 4-1 with a 1.21 ERA in elimination starts. And he's married to Kate Upton in the third. J.D. Martinez, 0-2 count. Verlander drops in the slider, looks like it's right on the corner. Verlander does not get the strikeout call. Very next pitch, another breaking ball from Verlander. This time it's hanging up a little too high. Martinez smokes it to left near the Chick-fil-A sign. And so it's Boston striking first and spotting a lead to David Price. Lots of little balls. Price's postseason struggles well documented. 11 career starts, 0-9, 6.16 ERA. Fifth inning gets Tony Kemp. Through five innings, scoreless, qualifier of the win if the Sox hold on. Sixth inning, Rafael Devers at the dish, giving Price a little breathing room here. Three-run shot to left. It's 4 nothing. Let's go back to game four. Two-run Sox lead in the first. Jose Altuve, you remember this, of course. Mookie Betts, unable to come up with the catch. They called it fan interference. Said the fan closed his glove, prevented him from getting the out. I think that's, I think that's just a terrible, uh, terrible call. First. Oh, okay, that's it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the bottom line is the Boston Red Sox are going to the World Series, ladies and gentlemen. David Price setting a Red Sox record for most strikeouts in a potential series clinching game. Should the Dodgers win the National League Championship Series, it'll be a Red Sox Dodgers World Series for the first time since 1916. Incredible. Boston making their first World Series appearance since 2013. Jackie Bradley Jr. is your uh, American League Championship Series MVP, by the way. He had the Grand Slam. He had another home run. He was incredible in this one. Now, LeBron signing with the L.A. Lakers was described by his agent, Rich Paul, as LeBron doing what he wants to do. And judging by the Lakers roster, what LeBron wanted to do is take a four-year, $153 million contract and make Space Jam 2. The Lakers were in Portland to open their season, the city where young people go to retire. Trying to lead the Lakers to their first postseason in five years, first quarter. He spots Brandon Ingram, his first assist as a Laker. He looks great in the purple and gold, doesn't he? I mean, unless you're a Cavs fan. Oh, that's vicious. First basket as a Laker. Later, Damian Lillard sets up for a huge slam. James, 13 points of the first. Watch what happens when he checks out. Rookie Mo Wagner sitting in his seat. Move over, kid. Second quarter, Lillard turns the corner. JaVale McGee denies it. LeBron picks up the loose ball, spots McGee. And then when James checks out of the game again, this time, Wagner knows exactly what to do. He puts the seat cushion down for the King and sits behind him. Right now, they've just started the third quarter. Two-point lead for Portland. Back on camera again. This is the fourth on-camera intro, and we're only 14 minutes into the show. No one wants to see me this much. And that includes my children. It's too much, Dan. Broncos and cards in the Thursday nighter. By the way, cards are garbage. They're hot garbage. This one was a laugher, which the Broncos won 45 to 10. Still the cup. Back between the pipes for the first time in 300 days. Corey Crawford makes his long way to return for the Hawks. Highlights next.
Blue Jackets. You know, I'm not in favor of that goal call. Declare with a spectacular solo effort gets his second of the year. That is a beaut. Our buddy Sergey Bobrovsky is not a fan of the league's new streamlined goalie equipment. He said this week, you start to be afraid of pucks. You get bruises. It's terrible. It's a biggie. That's a nice big cup of Tim Hortons there. Sean Couture sends it on net and Bobrovsky, you're off the case. Head in your weed breathalyzer. He gave up three goals and 35 shots, but second period, Cam Atkinson. This is a gorgeous goal here. Watch this. Oh, that's nice. Beating Calvin Pickard, second of the game. Jackets double up. Philly. Yotes and Hawks, it's the return of Corey Crawford. Chicago tried out five different starting goalies in Crawford's absence. He was out with a concussion. Arizona had just three goals in their first five games combined. They strike for four and ruin Crawford's return. I love Crawford's all-black gear. Very yeah, timid. and it's just good to see him back playing. It is. He had, a, yeah. he had a lot of problems getting back, and good to see him back. You having some problems there with your pants? I've got these, like, wax laces on these shoes, and it... They always feel like they're undone. Ah, I got a new suit on from our friends at Indochino. Shout out to Indochino. Guy Boucher put an end to any speculation regarding Brady Kachuk's leg injury, confirming he has a torn ligament and will be out for a month. It's not a knee like has been reported. It's, it's, it's a leg, a ligament. Don't look too far. It just takes the time and it takes to heal. That's it. Dan, the Sens, remember Pierre Dorian was asked uh, about the Sens, what their identity would be, and he said, we're a team, mm -hmm. or something like that. It sounded weird. I think he might be right, because they had a Halloween party this week, and uh, they busted out some pretty sweet costumes. We showed you this one. There's Brady Kachuk on the right, Mark Stone on the left, Ricky Bobby, Cal Naughton Jr. from Talladega Nights. That's Matt Duchesne and his wife. They shared the fact they're expecting a baby in January. A little baby skeleton, tiny, I get it. A tiny skeleton Whoa. baby. Max Lejoie, Alex Formenton, uh, they built on their team chemistry. Uh, they were a horse. Who was, who was the back end? You who don't want to be the back end. Uh, who is this? Uh, John Gar who is this? Uh, Cody Cece and his wife, Crocodile and the Crocodile Hunter. And then J.G. Pajo and his wife, well, they're just an elderly couple. Yeah, dressed as me. <laughs> I like that. You know when they're putting that much effort into the Halloween costumes that they actually want to go to the party and have a good time, right? Yeah, they didn't just go to a store and buy a costume. Yeah, or put on, like, just the ghost. Well, I guess they did go to a store. What am I talking about? I don't know. Well, they had to go to the store to get some of the supplies to make the costume. Yeah. Unless they live in a Halloween costume store. Well, that would be interesting, living in a Halloween costume store and then being able to put on anything you wanted and going out and wear that every day. Why don't more people live in Halloween costume stores? You could stores? just pretend your closet, your regular closet, was costumes, but they're just human right. costumes. Right. So we all live in a costume store. I guess in a way we do. Wow. <laughs> Johnny, <laughs> Johnny good job was forced to leave Wednesday's game by NHL concussion spotters after taking a hit from Charlie McAvoy in the third. Initial assessments point to Goudreau being fine. He's expected to play Friday against the Preds. Goudreau also collected his third goal of the season before leaving the game. My mind's still, mind's still uh, calculating everything up there from our last discussion. How about the costumes? Yeah, we had an epiphany. Goudreau also collected his 100th NHL career goal in the game before leaving. Now, NHL beat reporters will go to great lengths to get the best sound bites, and some are forced into awkward positions to get that best clip, as we see in the latest edition of our very popular NHL Scrum Lurkers. Uh, yeah, you get that excitement again, and um, have to play in front of these.
<laughs> oh, a lot of appearances there by our friend uh, Reed Wilkins. 6.30 Chet thing. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> it's all from Tim. Tim is so sick right now. He can barely speak. This is speak. how Tim sounds right now on the mic in our ear. He's like, oh, coming up, guys. This is Girl Markers. <laughs> Tim might not last this entire show. This could be it for Tim. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think because I have a closet full of suits here at work, I could just live here at work and that could be my Halloween costume? Store? Yeah. Yes. When we come back, the greatest sports awards segment ever seen on a Thursday in October, it's the Jannies. You're watching Jane Dan, a show about Halloween costume stores. Time for the Jannies and get ready. Producer Tim currently working on a fall-themed graphic for the Jannies. Looking forward for that to be revealed next week. Tim, is that right? Next week? Tim ignored me. Anthony Duclair, I think this might be the Han, Dan. Yeah. Second of the season, Blue Jackets beat the Flyers on Thursday. Broncos, uh, they beat up on the cards. Emmanuel Sanders takes the pitch, tosses to fellow wide receiver, Cortland Sutton. What a play. Ow, Govna. Touchdown. Heat Wizards, Derek Jones Jr. Uh, the Heat won this game on a last second put back bucket by Canadian Kelly O'Lynn. Back to Columbus, Michael Raffle. Great opportunity, Sergey. Bobrovsky with an incredible save. Bobrovsky! That's your Bobrovsky! Going, not up for you. Thursday night football pregame, Kurt Warner doing some sideline work, and his former teammate Larry Fitzgerald gets him for the sack. Do you think that was staged? It seemed staged, but how could it be? Corey Crawford playing his first game since last December. Michael Grabner, two great chances. Crawford, a couple of great saves. Arizona won this game, but uh, as we said, great to see Corey Crawford back in the lineup. 2017 Red Wings draft pick and Peterborough Pete Cole Fraser. Huge hit. Hey, that's at the Memorial Center. And that was on... Uh, I can't get enough of the Jennies. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Just two weeks into the NHL season, if there's been one standout performer, it's gritty. But how much do we really know about uh, Philadelphia's mascot, Gritty? Turns out, not much. Gritty, the Philadelphia Flyers mascot that took the sports world by storm. But before Gritty was trending online and appearing on late night talk shows, he was just a monster with a dark side. People see Gritty now and they see a happy, goofy mascot, but there are some dark secrets behind those googly eyes. A story of fame, hockey, and a ton of grit. This is the story of Gritty, the Jay and Dan true hockey story. Gritty was born Gritmothy R. Tough and Stuff, just outside Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Gritty, as he became known, was quickly abandoned by his mother. Yep. He was an ugly baby. You couldn't even pretend he was cute, and that mother, she was right to leave. Hockey was a passion at a young age, and the love of the game followed him all the way to the big time. Gritty would quickly become the most famous mascot in the world. It was just crazy. It was like four Beatlemanias and Y2K gave birth to flossing. I've never seen anything like it. But at the peak of his popularity, not everything was beards and Zamboni rides in the Grittyverse. Fame would get to Gritty's helmet. Gritty was the biggest star in the world. And with all that fame and fortune comes temptation, to which Gritty wasn't immune. The guy's out of control. I mean, sure, we got Gritty with a little bit of everything. It was fun for a bit, but uh, then, you know, he just fell in with the wrong crowd. Run down and out of options, Gritty was running out of the one thing he never thought he would. Grit. I would get phone calls in the middle of the night with just heavy breathing and hear the words, it me, on the other end of the line. And I knew it him. I knew it Gritty. Then one day, Gritty showed up at a Flyers home game in the wrong team uniform. 
the writing was on the wall. Gritty had hit rock bottom. A stint at the Jim Henson's Muppet Rehabilitation Center. When I first saw him, days later, I couldn't believe my eyes. It was him. It Gritty. Gritty returned to Flyers practice with a new lease on life. I didn't just get some mascot back. I got my best friend, too. Welcome home, Gritty. And that's what happened in the last couple days, we assume. Man, poignant. <laughs> oh, it, you know, it's emotional because you believe in someone and you want them to be able to come back and be successful. And you know, that's what it's all about, is supporting people when they're down. Right. It's Friday Night Football. Friday Night Football tonight. Top two teams meet for the first of back-to-back -back games on... Friday Night Football tonight. Tabby's Red Blacks. That's followed by... Eskies. <laughs> okay, ladies, we got it. It's a doubleheader. One more time. Friday Night Football tonight. Man, I want to know how many people uh, poop their pants at those games when that cannon goes off. Oh, I don't want to know that, actually. Uh, that's, if it, there, you could name something that I absolutely do not want to know. Okay. I don't want to know how many people poop their pants. Dan, you didn't blow up, but you got really deep on us. Here was your quote. They didn't just go to a store to buy their costume. He's talking about the Ottawa Senators. Or I guess they would have, unless they lived in a costume store. You can just pretend your closet your regular closet was costumes, but just human costumes. So we all live in a costume store. Next Aren't up. all costumes human costumes? Costumes for humans, but our clothes were dressed up as humans. Not like uh, Super Mario or something. Although Super Mario wore human clothes. Yeah, he was a plumber. Hmm. That's it? That's all we blew? There was other stuff, but uh, it's too late now. Hey, it's time for Jan Dan Bloop Bloops. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Andrew. Do you know Andrew who works here? Ben? No. Okay, I gotta find it. We'll just wait. <laughs> I'll bring it up prompter. You guys mentioned last year that you continue to play in a softball league? How successful of a summer was it for Team Pete Rose and the Gambler? The okay. Preparation on this show, guys. <laughs> You had a second me yet, Dan? No. <laughs> Another one for Glenn. Jenny's. We'll be back right after this, people. Everyone's got the flu. Who's playing on the Habs now? Producer Tim? <laughs> Getting everyone sick? <laughs> Producer Tim, just a roll of water bottle. <laughs> <laughs> My shift. <laughs> My shift. <laughs> Go, Julian. My shift. <laughs>